stump them out here in the ground? Well, we'll take them with us if you want us to and wait for you in Durango. Yeah. In the film, a journey to Mexico leads to unexpected consequences when a man brings home something that sparks turmoil in his marriage. The story unfolds around the themes of greed, trust, and betrayal, highlighting how a seemingly innocent act can unravel a relationship. As he dives into the quest for riches, his choices begin to shadow his intentions. Central characters are portrayed by notable actors, adding depth to the narrative. The husband, motivated by ambition, faces moral dilemmas that test his loyalty. Meanwhile, his wife grapples with feelings of insecurity and doubt, ultimately leading her to a breaking point. Their interactions reflect a range of emotions, from love and hope to resentment and despair. The tension builds as secrets emerge, showcasing how material desires can clash with personal values. The film expertly weaves these elements together, making every scene impactful. Each decision becomes critical as the story explores the fragile nature of relationships in the face of greed and ambition. In the film, set in 1925, Fred C. Hobbs and Bob Curtin find themselves struggling in the port town of Tampico, Mexico. Both men are desperate for work and a better life when they encounter Howard, a seasoned prospector. Intrigued by the idea of hunting for gold, they join forces with Howard, driven by dreams of wealth and adventure. As they venture into the rugged wilderness of central Mexico, they face numerous obstacles, from harsh weather conditions to the constant threat of bandit attacks. Despite these challenges, their determination leads them to discover a rich vein of gold, igniting hopes of fortune. However, the discovery brings out the darker sides of human nature, particularly greed, which begins to unravel their partnership. Tensions rise as the characters confront not only external dangers, but also their inner demons, highlighting how swiftly success can turn into disaster when trust erodes. The film explores themes of ambition, morality, and the profound effects of greed. To beat it. Nah, no, that'd be foolish. Sit around for an hour or so playing the innocent and then going to report. John Huston, the director, was completely fascinated with the mysterious writer, B. Travis, who was a recluse living in Mexico. Travis approved the director and his screenplay all by letter. He then sent his intimate friend Hal Croves to the location to be a technical advisor on the film. All this was done for the price of 150 a week. Alto! Parele, parele! Vengan acá todos! The mystery surrounding the identity of B. Traven is a captivating aspect that has puzzled many since the film's release. Although the general consensus suggests that Crows was, in fact, Traven, he consistently denied this connection throughout his life. This denial only deepens the intrigue, as the true identity of Traven remains an enigma to this day. The name B. Traven is widely recognized as a pen name, shrouded in layers of speculation and rumor. Many have attempted to uncover the individual behind this alias, leading to various theories, but none have definitively solved the riddle. Critics and enthusiasts alike have engaged in discussions about the significance of this hidden identity within the context of the film. Some believe that this mystery parallels the themes of deception and greed depicted in the story. The exploration of human nature and the consequences of obsession over material wealth are central to the narrative, mirroring the complexities of Traven's hidden persona. This blending of fiction and reality adds an intriguing layer to the audience's experience, prompting them to question not only the motives of the characters, but also the authenticity of the creator behind the narrative. The fact that B. Traven's true identity remains obscured only serves to enhance the allure of the film and its themes leaving viewers with lingering questions that may never be fully answered. You mind telling me what this is all about Don't first? get anywhere playing dumb. Well, I'll be. So that's where you're good to hidden, eh, Dodsey? In 1947, the director John Huston pulled off a memorable practical joke during a campfire scene in the movie. Bruce Bennett, while playing his character who was starving, unknowingly fell victim to Houston's prank. Houston, known for his love of practical jokes, had Bennett repeatedly eat plate after plate of stew, 
as the cameras kept rolling for take after take. Houston, slyly pleased with Bennett's initial performance, had not even begun filming the subsequent takes, leaving Bennett to consume increasing amounts of stew. The unsuspecting actor's dedication to the scene led to a hilarious and unwittingly overindulgent performance. This behind-the-scenes prank added an unexpected level of humor to the filming process, highlighting the camaraderie and playful spirit present on the set. Houston's mischievous sense of humor undoubtedly left a lasting impression on the cast and crew of the film, creating a memorable and amusing anecdote from the production of the movie. I guess it's only a matter of time until he shows up here. Then won't we tell him straight off? As soon as the joke was completely revealed, the director added insult to injury by calling for a lunch break on the set. This moment highlighted the unique dynamic between Humphrey Bogart and John Huiston during filming. Bogart had a deep admiration for Houston, enjoying the collaborative experience immensely. Their working relationship was marked by Houston's perfectionism, which pushed Bogart to his limits. Long days on location became grueling and exhausting, yet Bogart appreciated Houston's dedication to the craft. The meticulous attention to detail that Huiston demanded often led to extended hours under the sun testing the actor's endurance. Despite the challenges, Bogart found himself inspired by Houston's vision, which made the hard work feel worthwhile. The blend of humor and an intensity in their interactions created an atmosphere that was both challenging and rewarding, allowing the film to flourish as a classic. Their bond forged through adversity left a lasting impact on both men. Step down. Try to put anything over on me, it'll be a... During the filming of the movie, the director's perfectionism was evident in every aspect. He was determined to achieve perfection for each shot, no matter the cost. This dedication led to extreme conditions on set, with the crew and cast navigating streams and braving snake-infested areas in scorching temperatures, all to capture the ideal shot. The director's relentless pursuit of perfection pushed everyone involved to their limits, resulting in a film that truly reflected his uncompromising vision. Take some and thank him. As the production of the film progressed, Humphrey Bogart found himself increasingly anxious about missing the Honolulu Classic. This race, which spanned from Catalina Island to Hawaii, was an event he eagerly participated in each year. The pressure mounted as filming stretched on, affecting his mood and focus. Bogart was an avid yachtsman deeply passionate about sailing. He cherished the sense of freedom and adventure it brought him, which stood in stark contrast to the demands of the film set. The longer the production took, the more he worried about being unable to compete in the race he loved so much. This tension added an extra layer to his performance as he grappled with the commitment to his craft while yearning for the thrill of the open sea. His dedication to both acting and sailing highlighted his multifaceted personality, showcasing a man torn between his love for film and his passion for yacht. The pressures of the movie business often clashed with the simplicity and joy he found in sailing, creating an intriguing dynamic during the making of the show. He ought to be here any minute. Pablo, asómate al camino a ver si ves dos hombres a caballo. Despite assurances from the studio that he would be wrapped in time on the picture to make it there, he started to constantly dog the director about whether or not he would be done in time. Eventually, Houston had had enough, and he grabbed Bogart by, by the nose and twisted really hard. Bogart never asked him again how long it would be before shooting was over. As filming was about to start to shoot the scenes in Tampico, Mexico, the production was shut down by the local government. The cast and crew were at a complete loss to understand why, since the residents of the government of Tampico had been so generous to all of them in the past few days. The newspaper story revealed that the local newspaper printed a false story accusing the filmmakers of creating a production that was unflattering to Mexico. 
The director soon discovered the reason behind this incident. It's customary in this area to offer money to the newspaper editor to ensure positive coverage. Unfortunately, the crew failed to follow this practice. This misunderstanding led to the false accusations printed in the newspaper. The director's realization shed light on the importance of cultural practices in the region. This incident taught the crew the significance of local customs and the impact they can have on their work. It was a valuable lesson learned during the production of the film. But why not try gold digging for a change? Well, ain't he risky and waiting around here for a break? Fortunately, two of the director's associates stepped in to support him with the president of Mexico. They had a strong connection which helped a great deal in addressing the situation. The libelous accusations that had been made against the director were subsequently dropped. This turn of events allowed the film to proceed without any further complications. It is interesting to note that only a few weeks later, the editor of the newspaper responsible for the defamatory claims faced a tragic fate. He was caught in a compromising situation and was shot dead by a jealous husband. This shocking incident highlighted the volatile nature of the media and the consequences that can arise from scandalous reporting. The swift resolution of the director's issues enabled the film to gain the recognition it deserved, allowing audiences to enjoy its cinematic brilliance without the shadow of controversy lingering over it. The tumultuous background only added to the film's legacy showcasing the often hidden struggles faced by filmmakers during that era. And go safely, you'll have a big laugh, won't you? Thinking how dumb the old man and I were. In the film, John Huston also played a prank on Humphrey Bogart. In the scene where Bogart had to reach under a rock for hidden gold, he was told that an extremely venomous lizard had crawled under. The director placed a mouse trap where Bogart reached, making him think he had been bitten. Bogart, startled by the mouse trap, jumped back several feet. It is high time for luck to start smiling upon you. But just in case she doesn't, remember... In 1947, Humphrey Bogart started losing his hair around the same time he was making the film. It is thought that this hair loss was partly caused by hormone shots he was taking to improve his chances of having a child with his wife, Lauren Bucall. Despite his hair loss, Bogart wore a wig throughout the entire shoot although it was artfully tailored to not show much at all. The challenges of maintaining his appearance did not deter Bogart from delivering a stellar performance in the movie, showcasing his exceptional talent and dedication to his craft. While on location for the film, the director welcomed a little Mexican boy named Pablo into his life. Houston took Pablo under his wing, allowing the boy to run errands for him on set and creating a special bond that made the child feel like the crew's mascot. Throughout the production, the boy brought joy and innocence to the sometimes intense atmosphere of filmmaking. As the director prepared to wrap up in Mexico, he reflected on the connection they had forged during that time. He realized that he did not want to part ways with Pablo after the work was done. In a heartfelt decision, he chose to adopt the young boy making arrangements for him to come to the United States. This new chapter in Pablo's life meant that he would be living with Houston and his second wife, actress Evelyn Keyes. The adoption marked a significant moment of kindness, an opportunity, changing Pablo's future forever as he moved from Mexico to a new life filled with love and support. To hear such tall tales, because that means mighty few outsiders have ever set foot there. Well, let's get going. The director assumed his wife knew about this new addition to the family, but she did not. This discovery led to their divorce a short time later. The lack of communication and understanding between them ultimately ended their marriage. The film's themes of trust, honesty, and the consequences of miscommunication reflect the director's own experience. The impact of such a significant event on personal relationships is evident in how it played out in the director's life. The aftermath of this oversight highlights the importance of clear and open communication in all relationships, whether personal or professional. Yeah, looks like it. Well, then, why don't you go along with him, stay a few days, and we'll meet you in Durango. We'll wait for you there. What about my... Pablo went on to be educated in the United States, and eventually got married, and had three children. However, Pablo later deserted his family 
and returned to Mexico City to become a used car salesman. The film, released in 1947, remains significant today due to its impact on cinema and its enduring legacy. It has influenced countless filmmakers over the years with its portrayal of greed and human nature. The themes of ambition and betrayal are timeless, resonating with audiences of all ages. The movie's dialogue and performances are praised for their realism and depth, adding to its lasting appeal. Despite being over seven decades old, the film's exploration of moral dilemmas and the pursuit of wealth continues to captivate viewers, ensuring its relevance in the modern age. It remains a classic example of storytelling that transcends time. Here's another face, though. Thanks, mister. Thanks. But from now on, you have to make your way through life without my assistance. The casting process for the 1947 movie, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, was meticulous. For the role of Fred C. Dobbs, Humphrey Bogart was chosen due to his ability to portray complex characters. The director saw a blend of toughness and vulnerability in Bogart, making him a perfect fit. Walter Houston, who played Howard, impressed the casting team with his natural charisma and commanding presence during auditions. For the character of Curtin, Tim Holt's chemistry with Bogart and Huey Stem was undeniable during chemistry tests, solidifying his selection. The pivotal moments that defined the casting involved observing how each actor embodied their character's nuances and interacted with the other key players. This attention to detail resulted in a cast that truly brought the story to life. The directorial vision behind the 1947 movie, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, was to authentically portray the dark and gripping exploration of greed and moral degradation. Director John Huist Andrew, inspiration from his own experiences and observations of human nature, infusing the film with a raw and gritty realism. Houston's creative influences stemmed from classic Western themes but he pushed boundaries by delving deeper into the psychological aspects of his characters. His style reflected a focus on character development, creating multi-dimensional personas that resonated with audiences. Huiston collaborated closely with the cast and crew, encouraging improvisation and natural dialogue delivery to enhance the film's authenticity. Through effective storytelling and meticulous attention to detail, the director successfully brought the story to life, capturing the bleak essence of the human condition in a treacherous pursuit of wealth. The result was a timeless classic that continues to captivate viewers with its unflinching exploration of greed and betrayal. Who's ordering who to do anything? You talk like you're a boss of this outfit. During the production of the 1947 movie, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, the set design aimed to recreate the rugged landscape of the Mexican mountain. The crew found suitable locations in Durango, Mexico, where they faced challenges due to the harsh terrain and remote conditions. Innovative techniques like map painting were used to extend the scenery beyond its actual limit. The crew also used real desert locations to enhance the authenticity of the film. Despite logistical challenges, the production team successfully captured the essence of the story through careful set design and location choices. I was with the crowd in the British Honduras where it made my fare back home and almost enough over to kill me the fever I'd caught. Southern California. The musical score and soundtrack for the 1947 movie The Treasure of the Sierra Madre were composed by Max Steiner. The music in the film effectively enhances the narrative and emotional tone by creating tension, suspense, and drama. The use of traditional Mexican folk melodies and instruments adds authenticity to the portrayal of the story set in Mexico. Ah, the score complements the rugged and intense journey of the characters as they search for gold in the treacherous Sierra Madre Mountains. Steiner's expertise in scoring films shines through in this soundtrack, with the music seamlessly blending with the on-screen action to evoke a sense of adventure 
and danger. The use of orchestral elements combined with Latin influences creates a unique and captivating soundscape that immerses the audience in the world of the film. The musicians involved in recording the soundtrack brought Steiner's compositions to life with their exceptional performances, capturing the essence of the character's struggles and the harsh environment they faced. Through the skillful use of music, the emotional depth of the characters and the moral dilemmas they encounter are intensified, leaving a lasting impact on the viewers. Overall, the musical score and soundtrack of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre play a crucial role in enhancing the film's storytelling, capturing the essence of the character's journey, and heightening the emotional experience for the audience. In the film, one of the most memorable scenes occurs when the three characters first discover gold in the Sierra Madre Mountains. The direction by John Huiston captures the excitement and tension of this moment. The camera closely follows the characters, revealing their expressions of disbelief and joy. Humphrey Bogart's performance as Fred C. Dobbs is particularly striking. His face transitions from hope to a more sinister understanding of greed as the story unfolds. The cinematography emphasizes the harsh landscape, contrasting the beauty of the mountains with the darkness that greed brings. Another iconic scene it is when paranoia sets in among the characters. The use of shadows and dim lighting creates a claustrophobic atmosphere, mirroring their mental state. Walter Houston's portrayal of the old prospector Howard adds depth. He conveys wisdom, but also a sense of foreboding about the costs of their pursuit. The tension builds as trust erodes making viewers feel the character's despair. Commentary from John Huiston reveals that he aimed to explore the destructive nature of greed. Bogart once noted that the film reflects a harsh truth about human nature, which resonates with audiences even today. The film's ability to showcase these themes through powerful visuals and performances leaves a lasting impact, capturing the struggle between ambition and morality. The haunting music underscores moments of betrayal, enhancing the emotional weight of each scene. The audience is drawn into a world where the quest for wealth leads to inevitable conflict, showcasing the timeless message about the dangers of greed. You are not me. Up, march. Today I had to march to your music, now you'll march to mine. Where? To your funeral. The treasure of the Sierra Madre had a profound cultural and social impact. The film resonated with audiences by exploring themes of greed, power, and human nature. It depicted the darker aspects of humanity, leading viewers to ponder moral dilemmas and the consequences of unchecked ambition. The movie influenced pop culture by showcasing complex characters and a gritty storyline that broke away from traditional Hollywood narratives. It inspired future filmmakers to explore deeper themes and characters in their work setting a new standard for storytelling in cinema. In discussions on relevant social and cultural themes, the treasure of the Sierra Madre sparked conversations about wealth, friendship, and the corrupting influence of power. It challenged societal norms and stereotypes, encouraging audiences to reflect on their own values and priorities. Overall, this classic film left a lasting impact on audiences pop culture, and discussions surrounding human behavior and ethic. Un castol de maíz, harina dos kilos, azica dos kilos. The 1947 movie, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre received critical acclaim upon its release. It was praised for its gripping storyline, stellar performances, and gritty depiction of greed and paranoia. Key reviews hailed the film as a masterpiece of American cinema, lauding Humphrey Bogart's performance in particular. Audience reactions were also highly positive, with viewers appreciating the tense and thought-provoking nature of the film. In terms of awards, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre was a major success. It won three Academy Awards, including Best Director for John Huston and Best Supporting Actor for Walter Houston. The film also received nominations for Best Picture and Best Adapted Screenplay. These accolades signify the exceptional quality of the film, 
and the talent of the those involved in its creation. For the cast and crew, the awards and critical reception of the treasure of the Sierra Madre were a validation of their hard work and creativity. Winning Academy Awards solidified their status in Hollywood and cemented the film's legacy as a classic in cinema history. During the filming of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, Humphrey Bogart accidentally injured co-star Alfonso Bedoya. Despite the mishap, Bedoya insisted on continuing to act in the scene, and his dedication impressed the cast and crew. Additionally, the famous line, Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges, was ad-libbed by Alfonso Bedoya and ended up becoming one of the most iconic lines in film history. The camaraderie among the cast and crew added to the film's authenticity and success. The treasure of the Sierra Madre holds a significant place in film history for its exploration of greed and human nature. Its gritty portrayal of characters consumed by lust for wealth influenced future filmmakers, inspiring works like No Country for Old Men and There Will Be Blood. The movie's legacy endures as a timeless classic that continues to captivate audiences with its powerful storytelling and thematic depth. Don't you guys think the spirit's gone? I'm all set to shoulder a pickaxe and a shovel any time anybody's willing to share expenses. I'd rather go by myself. Go on alone. As you reflect on the 1947 classic, the treasure of the Sierra Madre, invite us into your world of memories and experiences. Share how this film has left an imprint on your heart and influenced your view of cinema. Your stories hold the key to unlocking a treasure trove of shared connections and insights. Let's embark on this cinematic journey together. Like, share, and subscribe for more captivating explorations into the world of film. Myself, Claire, I think you'll be doing yourself a favor by packing up and getting out of here tomorrow morning.